interesting uh, technology that um, if you haven't heard about it before, you want to pay close attention. It actually has wide-ranging uh, implications and usages, uh, both within the chipper world and within the SOC world. Thank you very much, Cliff. And I'm sorry I'm going to repeat some of the things that have been said before, you know, because I'm happy to see that everybody's in agreement about a lot of things. So, um, about how chiplets are the future, about how challenging it is, about testing. Um, so, I'm just going to repeat a little bit for the people who are, will be watching it offline, you know, in the future, but I'll quickly get to the point where I'm presenting what's the innovation here. <clears throat> and again, I was supposed to be uh, joined by my colleague Nir, but he wasn't able to make it, so I'm going to start on my own. <clears throat> All right, so just for completeness, right, more than more means overcoming the radical size limitations for large devices. It means improving yield, right? Uh, going back from exponential um, to linear uh, yield. Um, it means that we can do hybrid devices. Um, CPU, GPU, um, NPU can be done on their um, innovative um, um, node. And then the other one, the DRAM, can be done on a DRAM process. The wireless and analog can be done on a uh, on an analog process. So um, this all leads to the economies of scale that you know um, DJ was talking about. But the critical part when you're connecting chiplets is the interconnect, and this interconnect is is becoming a challenge. So no matter what technologies you're going to use, whether it's a silicon interposer or an organic stab straight, uh, whether you're choosing serial or parallel, you have some technologies that you have to deal with, right? Um, you have bump reliability. You could have voids and cracks. You have TSV reliability. You could have a partial fill or copper plating, cracking, and the via wall delamination. You have lane stress reliability. Um, you can see a picture over here. And then uh, once you've solved all of these, then you got into the driver and receiver. And then you see first aging, right? This is going to be changing over time. And lane to lane changes, right? So all of these puts us in a very delicate position. And this is from another colleague, Srijit. OCP, right? He said, without a cluster level repair, we don't have enough yield. So there is a real problem. Yield is a real big problem. So let's think about it. Why is it a big problem? And I think that uh, Yogan has spoken about testing. And what we can do today is basically test the SIP package itself, right? Uh, we cannot test the interconnects internally here. Well, first, because the bumps are too small, right? So we don't have the equipment to do that. But let's assume that we have it, right? Just touching these bumps, you'll destroy them, right? So at this point, we have a blind spot. And so we cannot test what's going on inside, all right? So let's talk about yield. Well, if I discovered a problem on a lane that is unrepairable, right? There are ways to repair it. But if we found an issue that is unrepairable, then this costs us 10 times the price of the SIP package itself. So this is something we want to avoid. So let's take a look about it. Um, today's problems. Lim limited coverage for chiplet. That's what Jürgen was mentioning. Um, known defect modes related to assembly process, which cause poor yield. And then we have thousands of lanes inside this package, thousands. And right now, there's no test for die-to-die -die at the SIP level. Now, existing test methods, and this was mentioned by someone before, you can loop back, right? But this has limitations as well. You're sensitive to the driver, to the receiver. You never know what you're going to get, right? It's like 
baking a cake based on a recipe, you never know what you're going to get because the, the ingredients are going to change, the oven temperature is going to change, so you never know what, what you're going to get. And even if you close the loop and it worked, now you open the loop and it doesn't work. And um, you can only test it in test mode. So as you go to the field, all right, we're back on a motherboard, um, infield, data center, it's running, there's no way to test it again. So these are the main concerns of the interconnect. And I want to put an emphasis on what Jürgen has mentioned again. The current method to test is pass or fail, right? That's all you got. Now, we wish, really, to have some kind of grading. Is it something between 0 and 1, right? Is it good enough or not good enough, right? Um, if I have the capability of swapping lanes, should I? And which one? And that's where, you know, our technology is coming in. So we at Proteontics found a way to practically embed a virtual scope inside each one of the lanes. So this per lane monitor, right, is going to be working either on the transmit or the receive or both. And then we can measure the quality of the lane, just as if you would have a scope embedded inside the, the chip. And so just a few properties of this lane grading, right? It's going to be performed at the single level lane. So each one of the lanes can be tested. It's going to be uh, compared across the interface to find which of the uh, lanes is better than the other. Um, and then the lowest graded lane can be swapped for a spare. And just imagine, right, if I, if I did a pass test fail and I had three lanes that were not passing the test, okay? Now, if I have two spare lanes, which one do I want to, do I want to change? And, and should I? Should I even leave this die um, um, to be there? And then the chipless grading can be compared. So I can decide which one of the devices is causing the problem. And it, again, I remind you, this is a heterogeneous integration. So one device that is bad could be causing the entire SIP to fail. And then, of course, I don't need the one-second test that Jürgen has mentioned, right? This is immediate, right? We're talking nanoseconds. All right, so much shorter time is needed. All right, so I'm not only speaking theoretically. This is real, OK? This magic is real. And we've done a test chip with uh, GUC. And this test chip has a few results. I, I had a bunch of slides, and I needed to, to decide which one I'm going to show you. But this is just an example here. Um, what you see here are four corners of a split lot. Um, and you can see the green one is the slow, slow one. So we're, no wonder that we see that the, uh, the, that the results of the green one are much lower than the others. And again, this is something that you get immediately after you power up, right? This is not something that you have to run a test for. No loopback, nothing. You get it immediately. <clears throat> um, here's another thing. On this test chip, there was a default design, and then there was an experimental design. And so we wanted to see which one is better. And interestingly enough, th these were running at 9 gigabit, 9 gigabit per second, 12, 14, and then finally 16. All right. So, and you can see the uh, default design and the experimental design. And so, there is a consistency between these two designs <clears throat> as you go from 9 to 12 to 14. And you can see it's degrading um, within, within what we expected. But then when you get to 16, look what happens here. Suddenly, the experimental designing is failing. So 
By having this mechanism, we were able to uncover a design problem, right? Another one. So this entire I thing, right? You're, this is a heat map of the clock to data and data to clock, right? Normally, right, if the clock is exactly in between, you would have the same clock to data, data to clock, right? And what you see here is a difference. Now, take a look here, right? You see that this is red. Now, green means good, red means bad, right? Um, and so uh, what you see here is less of a, uh, data to clock, and you can see that this is the expense of the clock to data, right? And what you see in the corners here is the opposite. So now, if my phi allows me, right, I could tweak it and bring it back. So that's a way to save the die, right? And at least I know where the problem is, right? I know that I have some timing problem. And finally, what I want to show you is that if you have a defect, right, on the bump, on the TVS, the driver, the receiver, you'll be able to actually measure it. So th in this case, what you see is a resistive, right, effect, so a higher increase of, of, of the resistance, a higher RC, so you see the slew rate over here is much worse than the one over here, right? And so you see that. You can actually see that and solve a lot of problems. All right, so what I want you to take away from this one is one. We all agree in this room, at least in this room, right? We all agree that if you don't, if you're not, if your roadmap does not include chiplets at this point, you're late. You should be in the game. The second thing is we know that assembly right, is going to be a challenge. Testing, right, and, um, and mechanism to bypass issues. The third thing is that if you have latent defects, these are walking wounded. And at a certain point in time, they will appear. And they will cause you failure. And you have no way to test them. You have no way to know what's the cause. And then finally, that pass-fail testing is not good enough. We should have the same capabilities that we have on the motherboard inside the chiplet. Right? I don't remember who said that um, the chiplet is the new, uh, the new motherboard. So if it is the new motherboard, let's have the same capabilities that you have on the motherboard inside the SIP. And so what you need is in-chip in monitoring. This is your best approach. And then you must consider per-lane parametric grading during the production and in-field in mission to assure product reliability and safety. Thank you. I think we've got one more speaker for today. Uh, here. And this is uh, going to be a security-related discussion. And somehow we always put security at the end, but it's not an afterthought, I promise. And so we want to leave everybody, have everybody leaving the room thinking about security as they go forward and design their chiplet systems. <laughs>